you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Welcome to the big show, our family and friends. As always, we're bringing you for 15 years, two to three shows a weekday, 10 to 15 shows a week. Uh, we're bringing you the podcast billionaires, CEOs, entrepreneurs, newsmakers, and the hottest authors that come on to talk shop, including Pulitzer Prize winners, unit advisors, and presidents, and White Houses alike. Uh, we have the most amazing minds on the show, and none of them are me. I'm just the host. <laughs> I got a mic. But remember, the Chris Voss Show is the family that loves you but doesn't judge you. So that's all the more reason you should refer it to your family and friends this holiday season. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Voss, uh, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Voss, and Chris Voss one over there on the tickety talkity. Today we're talking about entrepreneurism, uh, fitness, getting healthy. Uh, we're going to be talking about leadership and all sorts of good stuff. It's going to be a jam packed. Uh, what is it? What does it say? A roller coaster of brain bleed. So there you go. We may figure out how to patch the brain bleed. So I don't know, but that's half the fun. Uh, we have Greg Birch on the show with us today, and we're going to be talking about his company, Delta Fit, and uh, everything he does to help people with uh, not only leadership abilities to get healthy. Uh, he's a true warrior at heart, having served a country as an army officer in both iraq and afghanistan after completing his service he used his natural leadership abilities to excel in the insurance industry sending sales records and coaching others to achieve greatness but it was his personal struggle with anxiety and depression that led him on a journey of self-discovery and the creation of progressive discipline technique today as the founder of delta fit greg is dedicated to helping individuals transform their mental and physical and spiritual health to become their best selves. Welcome to the show, Greg. How are you? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you, sir? I, I am doing well. Awesome. <laughs> I, I, it's an honor to have you as well. Thank you for your service, sir. Give us the dot coms. Where we want people to find you on the interwebs, please. Yeah, the, the best place is uh, my website, which is deltafitlife.com. Um, and uh, you can find me on Instagram, right? Um, and my Instagram is Gregory A. Birch underscore at Gregory A. Birch, B I R C H underscore. There you go. And uh, I know you have a Delta company called Delta Financial as well. Do you want to get a plug in for them? Yeah. So my uh, my insurance agency is called Delta Financial and that the dot com is Delta Financial Life dot com. There you go. There you go. So you're a multi uh, faceted, multi serial entrepreneur, as they like to call us. Yes. There you go. Uh, so give us a, a 30,000 overview of uh, compass of what you do there at Delta Fit. Yeah. So um you know, Delta Fit started almost out of happenstance because uh, coming out of the military, I, uh, like most veterans, I suffered with a little bit of PTSD, you know, mm -hmm. and coming out, losing what I felt was my purpose, my passion, uh, a lot of the disciplines that are forced upon us. And now we have this freedom. I want to go into entrepreneurship. That's how I got into insurance. <clears throat> and through that journey, I found that I was falling more into depression, more into anxiety with PTSD. And um, it took for me to hit a rock bottom before I started working on myself. And I started going back to the daily disciplines that I learned in the military. And that is, is what actually propelled me to start hitting sales success and, and, and massive records, started breaking records, which helped me to launch Delta Financial. But people kept reaching out to me. They're like, Greg, what are you doing? You're a different person, man. Like you just seem happier. You seem healthier. You like yeah. a different energy about you. And, and, uh, I started coaching people from that, just from people reaching out to me and just basically helping them with being a better leader of themselves. Right. Cause leadership starts with yourself. It starts Definitely. with leading yourself uh, the, the right way. And, um, it was through that process over a couple, <clears throat> a couple years that, Eventually, I, I got a passion for helping people that I started Delta Fit. And so uh, in Delta Fit, what I do is I at the same process I went through where I was struggling with depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. I was having challenges in my life and as an entrepreneur and, and in my business. 
And when I started to remove vices from my life and I started focusing on daily discipline actions that helped boost me in terms of my physical side, my, my, uh, my, fit, my fitness, mm -hmm. uh, over time, what I found is it started to boost my mental fitness and my mental health. Uh, yeah. And those two combined, when I started working on those and kept pouring into them, it started helping my spiritual fitness. And really what mm -hmm. I see spiritual fitness is, is the faith in oneself, right? There you go. It's having the unwavering faith and belief that you can do anything, that you have greatness within you. And, um, and so I, I documented this process and what I did, mm -hmm. and I started helping people do the same. There you go. Uh, and it sounds like an incredible journey. I think people don't realize that we need to balance the two. Like I spent for years, uh, I'm like, I'm going to make my money and build my companies and be success. And yeah, my health is going to go by the side and, uh, it didn't help my mental health and everything else. And, and yeah, there's so much aspects, you know, people think of it as like, you're going to go to the gym and lift weights. Ugh. <laughs> you're so right. <laughs> I like to make fun of that stuff too. Cause yeah. it is kind of, it is a little ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like ever, I, I've actually, I went to a, I went to an event, um, it just this last week, it was called the badass business summit. <laughs> and, and it was in Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, actually, but I'm part of that. I'm in Dallas area. And I got invited through podcasting to go speak on stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I met a lot of people. And obviously, like you look at me, I'm a tall dude. I'm six, seven. I, I'm like 230 pounds. I'm pretty, I'm pretty muscular. And as people started talking to me, they felt, oh, oh, of course you're a fitness coach. But then when they saw me on stage, I started talking about sales, sales excellence, how to be better. I had people come up to me. They're like, dude, you're like an onion. <laughs> it's like, there's all these layers within you. There like, you this is, you're uh, not what we expected, right? Uh -huh. It's like, yeah, I kind of make fun of those people too. Because you just assume that someone's going to be like a gym bro or something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, but, you're actually right. And, and, and I think people use it as a way to... Uh... Uh, just make it as an excuse, you know, shame others uh, as an excuse not to go to the gym, mm. but it, it helps you at so many different levels as a man, it helps your testosterone. I'm sure mm. as a woman, it helps your maybe hormones in, in your system. It helps your mental state. There's a, the, one of the things that I learned from it, you used the word earlier, discipline. And one of my problems in life is, uh, I've been a little bit, uh, lazy and, uh, I've been lacking discipline a lot of the times. Um, and, and you know, <laughs> yeah, we, we've been through those phases and, uh, and so going to the gym, having the discipline of just going, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger said something about how, even if you don't feel like going to the gym, just go anyway. And there are some times where I don't feel like going to the gym, I feel kind of off or, whatever, maybe I'm hurting a little bit from the gym visit before, but, um, I'll, I'll just go and I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to go and I'll sit on the bench or I'll sit in the sauna room or I'll sit in the massage beds. So I'm just going to go mm -hmm. and I, I'll, and I'll force myself to just go. And as soon as I get there, like, I just kind of click in, I smell the place, I, the environment's there. I'm like, well, I'll go lift a little uh, weight here or there, but having that discipline. And that's what I realized that weightlifting was really for me was it wasn't about just lifting weights and being sexy you know i'm already there uh i've been there all my life <laughs> yes I, I you that, are sir i have that brad pitt i have that brad pitt george clooney thing they call me for tips um but uh it's really about the discipline it's about working your body showing up and showing up is half the battle and and doing the weights and having that mindset of discipline and it, it as you said it affects you in so many ways it it, awesome. it makes my brain clearer you know 55 you know it's starting to kind of fog over a little bit well it's been fogged over for a lot people in the audience are going we know you're for 15 years that shit fogged a long time ago but it, it does make a difference you know dude you're you're absolutely right chris the um there's two things first is there's a there's a study in the british sports Journal of Medicine mm -hmm. that talks about the power of going to the gym, fit, physical fitness, right? So they took three test groups. The first test group that all, uh, everyone in the, uh, all three test groups were suffering for mild to moderate depression. Mm -hmm. Test group number one was given antidepressants. Test group number two was given antidepressants in a workout routine. Oh, test really? group number three was just given the exact same workout routine as test group number two. And that's it. Uh -huh. So what they did is they studied them over a period of time mm -hmm. to see how effective each one of those were, were over with overcoming the mild to moderate depression. Now, not a big shocker. All three of them performed the same. 
in terms of people being able, the percentage of people that were able to overcome their depression, it was across the board the same. Wow. Okay. So that means that working out is just as effective as taking an antidepressant. Now, here's where the study gets in, interesting is after six months of they took the study is they went back to check up on everybody that was able to overcome their depression. And what they found was there was a relapse rate of people that fell back into depression. OK, so for, for the first test group that just had antidepressants, it was about 39 percent of wow. all people fell back in depression. OK, wow. Test group number two that had workouts and antidepressants, it wasn't much different. It was like 37 percent, 36 percent. Huh. Right. Test group number three, just working out eight percent. Wow. That's extraordinary. Numbers. That's extraordinary. Right. So, yeah. That just shows you that this is more effective for overcoming anxiety and depression in your life and having long-term effects mentally, as long as you're consistent, than taking an antidepressant, right? Wow. And it's because of the, the dopamine that you, is naturally released in your body. The, um, uh, the, there's there's uh, uh, endorphins that are naturally mm -hmm. released in your body when you work out. It helps with – it's your happy drugs. That's mm -hmm. natural. It is uh, helps with stress relief. It helps with your mind's ability to overcome uh, stress, to problem solve, et cetera, right? Now, I also, I start, one of the things that I do in, in Delta Fizz, I have people read because I read every day. Mm -hmm. I think reading is powerful, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that's changed my life. It's changed my businesses. And right now I'm reading, um, I'm finishing up Marcus Aurelius' Meditations. Mm. Great book. If you haven't read it, it's free. Like, just go get it. Get a PDF. It's free. Just go read it, right? So in the book, he talks about his morning routine. And every single day, he does journaling, right? He does workouts, and then he does work. But part of the workout in the journaling is it has to do with mindfulness, but also putting yourself in a position that you do something that's challenging and takes you out of comfort, takes you out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what it's meant to do. It's meant to kind of challenge your brain that you can do things uncomfortable. We are all designed to want comfort in life. Yeah. We're all designed to like take the easy route. It's, our brains are made that way. When we start to do things that challenge that status quo within our own mind, it makes other things possible. It definitely does. Uh, and that's, wow, that's an amazing study. I mean, maybe that's what we need to do with people that suffer depression. I suffered depression for most of my life because I, I didn't go work out and that discipline, the goal setting, like I enjoy pushing the new boundaries, just like, you know, you're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you enjoy pushing those new boundaries. You're like, Hey, Hey, how much revenue do we make this month or this year? All right, let's double that. Let's just try and get that to go to the next level. Same thing with uh, working out, pushing up to that next level. Hey, let's see if we can go. You know, I always get off on, okay, I went up, uh, I went up uh, one or two things on the rack, you know, and, and, uh, and, and then of course my goal is to be able to lift the whole machine rack and stuff. And, um, uh, and so, you know, setting goals and goal setting, I mean, that's all part of it. And you feel so good. Like I don't have time to be depressed after I beat myself up at the gym. I just want to go home and I have a protein shake. And yeah. maybe, maybe relax. <laughs> Sit in the massage chair, the sauna, the jacuzzi at the gym and, and just chill out, man. I, I don't have time to be depressed. My body's like, yeah, we're, you're not depressed anymore, man. You, 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 you did it and you're, you're beat up and you kind of feel good, even though you're beat up. I mean, it's kind of weird. You get kind of a, you get kind of almost addicted to, uh, knowing that you achieve something. It's a, the achievement, that discipline and achievement. Hey, I yeah. did something. And when you realize that a lot of people don't go to the gym, a lot of people cop out about exercising, going to the gym, you realize that you, you are achieving something. You're in the, you're in the top class. Like I, I never, if I see somebody at the gym, it doesn't matter if they're really obese, overweight, or they look like they haven't worked out forever. They've won like the battle of, I don't know, the one percentile or five percentile. Cause they mm. showed up. Yes. They showed up to do the thing. So, so give true. us. Give us a uh, give us an origin story view. How did you grow up, and what led you down this road, and and starting your own companies with Delta Financial and Delta Fit? Yeah, so uh, I I grew up. I'm the youngest of six. Both my parents were in the army uh, during Vietnam. That's how they met. Um, my my dad retired uh, out of the army uh, when I, and I got got I was about five. You know, I um, 
I was raised kind of poor, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> you know, uh, we didn't have we didn't have a lot of money, and I'm the youngest of six. And so, um, you know, I didn't I wasn't really pushed to to excel in, in in school. You know, it was just like I had to get a C. If I got anything below C, I was grounded. So that's that's, that's like in the middle of the road, right? So the classes I really liked, I got A's, and the classes I hated, I barely got a C. <laughs> Um, but my mom didn't want me to go to college and I always wanted to surf and mm -hmm. I, and, and nine 11 was my senior year of, year of high school. So oh, really? I remember, I remember I stayed home from school that day. Wow. And, uh, at the time my dad was working, he, um, he was working at Frigidaire, but like a, a second shift. So he would mm -hmm. go to work at like two and then he wouldn't get back to like 3 AM, 2 AM in the morning. So he was usually asleep by the time I got up and I woke up late that day because I skipped school. And uh, I, I did skip school, and my mom let me too, because I was just like, I don't want to go to school tomorrow. Uh, most random day that I could have skipped school of, of all times. Wow. So uh, I woke up, and my dad was up, and that was weird to me. And I'm like, why is dad up? So I go out in the living room, and I'm like looking at him. He's just dumped down and staring at the TV screen. And I'm mm. like, what are you watching? And I'm on the phone with my girlfriend, who also happened to skip school at the time, because we were going to hang out and I was like looking at the TV screen and I'm watching as the planes hitting the yeah. towers. First thing out of my mouth was I'm going to war. Wow. Like this is happening. And I knew I wanted to serve and I always wanted to be an officer growing up. And so, cause all my, all my family was enlisted, but my dad always talked about this captain that he had in Vietnam mm -hmm. with a lot of reverence, like he, a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. And so that always stuck with me as a young boy. And I, I, hey, if my dad respects them, that's what I want to be, right? Yeah. So I uh, always wanted to be a captain, which I ended up being. <laughs> so uh, I applied for my senior year coming out of coming out of high school. Uh, as I was graduating, I applied for a ROTC scholarship, and I got awarded an ROTC scholarship full ride. Deal was I had to go into the military, right? Mm -hmm. So I I went in the military happily. Um, spent 11 years in, I got married right before I, right before I got in the military, uh, we had four kids together. Wow. We ended up getting a divorce while I was in the military, which changed everything for me. And, yeah. um, that's one of the reasons that I ended up getting out was from the divorce. And, uh, that's when I decided like, Hey, I want to do, I want to see what I can do, you know, from all my experience in the military, everything I learned leadership, um, you know, I tested really high in sales. I was like, you know, I want to go see if I can do my own thing. Right. And that's how I started as an entrepreneur. I didn't have an entrepreneur family. I didn't have some crazy experience where, uh, you know, I was starting businesses as a kid or something like that. Like I had this entrepreneurial spirit. I really just wanted to test myself coming out mm -hmm. of the military. And, uh, I also wanted to prove that I was, that I was better. Right. Because coming out of the military after my divorce, I still had a lot of anxiety and depression. I was coming up PTSD, which affected how I saw myself, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I wanted to, I wanted to, I felt like the success was going to make me have more confidence in myself and make yeah. myself in a different way. Yeah. So you, you think when you finally reach that pinnacle, like it'll solve all your problems, especially if you make a large, large amount of money and success, it, it, you know, all, you'll be fixed. Yeah, and, and it's, it's and, not the case. <laughs> I always warn people about this because everyone's like, yeah, it must be nice to be rich and all your problems are fixed. And people assume that. They think like movie stars and billionaires, uh, Elon Musk and stuff. It's not. It actually amplifies the worst parts of you. It does. And and it can feed them, actually, if you kind of have narcissistic sort of traits or you have issues of denial and, and lack of self-accountability. It can make it worse. Way um, worse. It, yeah. Here's the thing is that it, it, what people don't realize is now you have the money and sometimes the freedom <laughs> that you can really double down on those vices and get yeah. real in the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> and you can worse. insulate yourself, too, from yeah. reality and, and uh, self-accountability. You can really insulate yourself and... And, uh, you know, like, I don't need to see a psychiatrist. I have money. And uh, <laughs> it really creates a delusion. So, uh, you know, this is this is really interesting. Uh, you know, the military, uh, we talked about this in the green room. We have talked about this uh, a lot on the show. We've mm -hmm. had some mil uh, people from West Point uh, who teach confidence and leadership at West Point uh, and some great authors from the military on the show. But the military does such a great job of teaching leadership. I mean, I'm I'm just 
baffled as to why we have so many military people, uh, you know, living in the streets and, and high suicide rate and joblessness. I mean, the, these folks are taught leadership and, and skill-based uh, things with multi-billion dollar equipment. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and you don't want them running your business? Like, <laughs> they, they were taking care of, you know, $35 billion fucking airplanes like you know uh uh you know uh you, 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 you want someone like running your company and a lot of people leave the military and do go into leadership positions and stuff like yourself uh how hard was it to start your first company what was it like going through the gauntlet of of you know you, you maybe didn't have any entrepreneurs around you to counsel you 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 just went for it so that's a great question <laughs> <laughs> Um, as a, I was a solo printer to start. So I, yeah. I started as an individual insurance agent and coming out of the military, I had a bit of an ego because I was like, <laughs> you know what? I, I freaking led soldiers <clears throat> in Iraq. And yeah. I was, you know, I, I got two bronze star medals, you know, I got, <laughs> like, I've been to Afghanistan. I've done some crazy stuff. Like I can sell an insurance policy. Like, yeah. so I, I would <clears throat> forego or ignore the advice I was given because I, you know, you got to control your schedule. You got to go to these trainings every single week. You got to get on the training calls. You got to, you know, do these man dials. And I'm like, I'm good. Like, I got it. Like you, you, you peons and monkeys could go. To that. I'm going to do my own thing. And I sucked. Oh, really, wow. And I sucked real bad. Yeah. <laughs> and it took for someone to look at me and, and basically put me in my place for me to realize that uh, I was my own worst enemy. And, mm. and I thought I was special and I wasn't. And uh, I had to humble myself. And uh, I started to do things mm. by the book when it came to sales, which helped mm -hmm. me to grow. Now, once I got to the point where I got so big, where I was starting to create an agency, I was within a structure of another company. And just like you were just talking about leadership, this company did not have leadership qualities. Oh. And they didn't have really good leaders that were at the top and like all the people at the top. They were very much like, hey, this is the status quo. It's well, like in every sales organization. This is just the way it is. And mm -hmm. I disagreed with it because I was just like, man, I've seen I've seen bad leaders and this is bad leadership. <laughs> and so I tried to insulate my team that I was building the agency. I was building within the entire hierarchy of the agency, uh, which is mm -hmm. my first real kind of in my company, my first LLC. And it was near impossible to do that. Mm -hmm. And I realized it took, it took about a year and a half of me trying to grow this while, while getting opposition from the top mm -hmm. on the way I was doing things before I finally said, you know what, enough's enough. And it took for me to start working on myself. And, and I had in 2021, I, that was when I hit rock bottom and at the end of 2020 and I started in 2021, like I'm going to work on myself. Right. And I, and I started this, this internal self-accountability program and discipline program that helped for me to change myself to the point that I made such drastic changes that I had a record-breaking sales month where I blew everyone out of the wow. room, like out of the water. Mm -hmm. And it got a lot of agents across the industry reaching out to me, asking me like, dude, how in the, how in the hell did you do that, bro? <laughs> like, this, and, I, and I just, hey man, I'm just, I, hey, I'm taking care of myself daily. I'm reading daily. I'm working out daily. I'm, I took, I got alcohol out of my life, you know, ah, there you go. Like I'm doing all these things out. to take care of me, which is helping me be a better person. And it was through that process that I started podcasting and that's how ah, I started my own podcast, yeah. which was for insurance agents to teach them sales, entrepreneurs, ah. all that kind of stuff. And, and, um, I made it such a name for myself that eventually I had someone kind of be like, dude, why don't you just make your own IMO? I us just do that. And I was like, at first I was like, nah, I mean, I just want to help agents. That's all I want. I just want to help agents. Yeah. I want them to succeed. And eventually that, that seed kind of flourished in my mind. And I was like, okay, now's the time I got to do it. And, and I started Delta financial in, um, in 2022, the beginning of 2022. And it's, so I've been going almost, it's been almost two years now that I've been running Delta financial and still throughout that entire time frame, I was still having agents reach out to me about, coaching and like how to help them get better at sales and what they didn't realize was i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give you some magical script that's gonna be like oh you say this and you'll make every sale kind of thing it doesn't work that way yeah. what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna harden your mind and i'm gonna harden your you know, improve you physically mentally and spiritually so that you are more efficient in everything that you do right there you and so i started coaching in that way 
and eventually I started Delta Fit the beginning of this year. So. There you go. Congratulations. Now, you mentioned a term IMO, starting an IMO. What yeah, so an IMO is a terminology that is in the insurance world. It means independent marketing organization. Okay. Basically, okay. it's a brokerage. It's an insurance brokerage. Okay. So we're like the middle guy between the insurance companies that don't want to handle agents, and mm -hmm. we handle all the agents for them. Oh, wow. So There you go. That's probably a big deal I, uh, uh, because, you know, uh, my, my father used to sell insurance back in the day and they were always being bought out and turned over by different companies. And it was insane, all the different stuff. And of course, some, some of the contracts would negate their residuals. It was kind of interesting. Yes. Um, it happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, here's the thing about sales. Confidence. People buy confidence. They buy someone who feels like a complete human being. And having what you talked about, you know, the fitness, the spiritual, the the mental game, the, the ability to sell well, uh, you know, sales skills. Um, having all those in in one thread, it, it gives you the ultimate package in being able to sell yourself. Because people buy. They don't buy the product. They don't buy the service. They buy the person selling. The person, yes. Yeah. And that's so important and you're so right when you have that full circumference of all the aspects of a of a well-balanced human being uh it's going to make all the difference in the world because if you don't have confidence people aren't going to buy from you mm -hmm. i mean you've got to have the confidence you you've and and if you seem like a person that people you know they like they enjoy uh you seem very happy in your thing you know working out has given me a thing where i just i just feel a level of confidence i imagine some of it's a little bit of t extra boost of testosterone but you just feel you stand you stand up taller like your body you know i i slump a lot um but you stand up taller you you can feel some muscles there and you're like yeah i kind of feel like a man and uh <laughs> You know, and, and your, your body responds, you know, like you said, the endorphins, the dopamine, all that sort of stuff that we don't really think about, mm. but that makes all the difference, you know, and it affects how you look too, because people buy from people who look good. That's just a fact. That is a fact. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard, hard to accept for some people, but it is. Yeah. A fact. It's also, it's, it's also on top of confidence. It's authenticity. Right. There you go. It's just being yourself and being okay with that. Mm -hmm. And and what I found was when I was more authentic with my clients on phone calls and just mm -hmm. talk to them like I would talk to anyone else. And I ask questions and I mm -hmm. would dig into like trying to actually serve and help them. And mm -hmm. I was an active listener. Man, my conversations went so much farther. Instead of just trying to get in the and just be like, I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna sell. Well, that's all about me. It has nothing to do with the client. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, One of the most important lines that I ever used, and I wrote about this in my book, and I, I can't remember where I came across it, it came from somebody else, but they said the most important, you know, stop saying, how can I help you? How can I help you? Um, and this is being taught to us in the 90s. We started getting yelled at by, don't, don't say, how can I help you? How can I help you? Um, and start asking people, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. And so I drilled that into my salespeople and, and taught them the first question I want you to ask somebody when you first greet them, you know, other than, you know, Hey, how you doing? Um, ask them, what are you trying to accomplish? And then shut the F up and listen, mm -hmm. listen to what they want to accomplish. They will give you the roadmap that they want to achieve and that they want success. And if you listen to them, you can help them resolve their problems and make it not about, like you said, you know, not about yourself, about them. And people love that because they, they don't hear it from anybody. You know, what are you trying to accomplish? Oh, what? And then shutting up and listening. But you're right. You know, if you feel good, you come across well, you can gain rapport. You just, you just feel good. And people are like, Hey, this guy is motivated. He's exciting. He's, he's interesting. He seems well put together. He seems like his life is balanced. I want to do business with this guy, mm -hmm. you know? And that just makes all the difference in, in the sales process, I think, and how you come across. And once again, people buy you. I mean, uh, one of my trick ponies has always been comedy and uh, having a great personality, even though I'm ugly and fat. So uh, I, have that, I, have that, I have that working for me. Works with women, too. If you, if you can do comedy and pull off uh, confidence and everything else. Yeah, so, no, that's right. <laughs> that's absolutely right. Yeah, if you, you got comedy, you, you can be dangerous. Um, so, uh, so let's talk about what you do for your clients and potential yeah. clients that might be out there listening with your fitness coaching. What yeah. sort of programs do you use? Uh, what sort of coaching do you use? Uh, and everything else. 
So um, surprise, surprise, I start everything off with the physical aspect, <laughs> as you could probably tell. Yeah. Um, so I have an app in the app store. You can go find it's Delta Fit Life. <clears throat> and um, and in that app, I, I do custom workouts based on where you're at. Mm -hmm. um, with has videos on every single exercise. I, it breaks down everything. And, uh, and the workouts scale with you as you get stronger, as you gain stamina. And if, if you're like, hey, I, I don't want to go to the gym or I don't have a gym nearby. Well, I can do home workouts. I have home workouts that are built out too with no equipment needed. And what I'm doing <clears throat> uh, on top of that is uh, nutrition. As I start to break down, I do. there's a mathematical calculation on how you have to determine what your macros are based on mm -hmm. your height, your weight, your BMI. Mm -hmm. So I do your macros based on if you want to gain weight or lose weight because I can do I, I've I've been able to bulk. I used to be really skinny. I was I was one seventy and six seven, and now I'm, I got all the way to two sixty, two seventy. So mm -hmm. I've I've been to both sides of the spectrum. I even got kind of what I felt was fat for me. I got to like two eighty when I was not working out, drinking a lot of alcohol, oh. or losing weight. And so um, I do macros because nutrition is important. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so if I can control what you're eating, if I can control how much water you're drinking and I can control how much you're moving, then I'm going to get change. I'm going to get progress. That feeling that you talked about in the gym when you feel good, you're like, dude, after I get done with the gym, I feel like, man, I'm really happy I went. Even though going into it, you might be like, oh, like, I don't know. I don't really want to go to jail. <laughs> but coming out of it, you always feel great. And so what I'm trying to do is get enough progress and change within a very short time frame mm -hmm. that it creates belief. Like, oh, wow. This is working because there's a lot of people mm -hmm. limiting beliefs. Like oh, I can't lose weight. I've tried. I've tried on every diet. <laughs> yeah, I, it's not my uh, my genetics are bad. This, that, the other. Like I, there's all kinds of limiting beliefs that just aren't true. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to challenge those limiting beliefs by creating enough change so mm -hmm. that I can do, get that belief built within you. And when that that's when I start to work on your mental side. We're going to do specific readings. We do uh, uh, one on one weekly coachings. And then over time, when you're building both of those, what naturally kind of happens and then what happened, what's happened for me and it's happened with many of my clients that follow the process is the spiritual alignment. And that's when you start to realize like you are the master of your destiny, that mm -hmm. everything in your life is due to the decisions that you have made, has nothing to do with external circumstances, has everything to do with your either inaction or action. And knowing that, that and you stop trying to control, you know, the uncontrollables and you only control what you control, which is what you think, what you say, what you mm -hmm. do, and how you feel. Those four things are the only thing you control. And when you start controlling those with faith that things are going to work out because you have greatness within you, you st powerful things happen in your life. It's Definitely. like becoming superhuman. There you go. And so and you, go you guys have helped uh, 250 plus people coach with the app. 10,000 pounds lost. That's amazing. You were at 280? I was at 280. Holy <laughs> yeah. shit, dude. Yeah, I, I was. Wow. Dude, one day, I, I, I'll be honest, I came out of the, uh, it was end of 2020. I was kind of depressed. I was drinking a lot, partying. And like we were saying, like when you're an entrepreneur and you're making money, like I was more apt to going out and drinking and partying because it yeah. made me feel good in that one brief little moment. But then as soon as I left, I felt depressed again. I woke up the next day. I'm, I'm hungover. I feel like crap. So I get out of the shower and I'm standing there in the like naked looking in the mirror. And I was like, man, I look disgusting. <laughs> I was like, this is not me. And it was that moment I was like trying to like suck in and I couldn't suck in enough that I couldn't look like I had, a, I was getting a gut. And I was like, okay, enough's enough. Like I'm, I'm done with this. Like I gotta, I, I want to look yeah. in the mirror and feel proud, you know? And that's how I felt. And so I was like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to, I'm getting back on my discipline because I'd lost it out of coming out of the military and, and, you know, it, it's funny how quickly we can lose it. it, it you know, it, it, I was, I was in really great shape in the military and, and being in that environment where it's very disciplined PTL the, all the time, you know, um, reading, doing, uh, trying to expand my mind with new capabilities because I'm always taking new positions. It's quickly how fast we can lose that and fall into the daily monotonous routine, especially as entrepreneurs. Yeah. And what I found was that while I was going through the process that a lot of the actions I was doing that I thought was helping me was actually hurting me because I, wow. I, I, I would be stressed. I'm like, well, I'm stressed, so I need to decompress. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go watch some TV for today. 
and let's, I'm gonna start my day. I'm gonna watch TV to decompress a little bit. Next thing you know, the whole day's gone by. I'm way more anxious because I haven't got anything done that I know I need to get done. But you know what? I feel less stressed, so I guess it worked. And or you know, coming home and just <clears throat> having a, a couple of sips. What I wanted to do is like a couple of sips of bourbon. Next thing you know, I've drank you know, six shots of bourbon between oh, yeah. two glasses because yeah. of just massive pores and I'm just guzzling them down. And I'm constantly in this state of like being hung over and then getting drunk, being hung over, getting drunk. Yeah. And it was just, it was ruining my life, man. And yeah. I didn't even realize how much it was putting me into a hole until I got to a point where I literally was, I I, I became suicidal and really? I was, wow. yeah, I, I got to, I, dude, I couldn't go a day without thinking a suicidal thought. And it was really difficult. I was trying, I tried to not think about it. I was like, this is no, this isn't me, but they kept popping up and I, I, wow. I felt worthless. I felt like no one loved me. I felt like, you know, uh, you know, from my past divorce, my kids being away, you know, and not having my kids all the time. And I call them, they wouldn't answer cause they're busy. Well, my kids don't want to, don't want to talk to me. I'm a wow. piece of crap. like, and it, it, it became so troubling that, I, you know, I did get to a point where I put a gun to my head and really, yeah. Wow. And, uh, and that was my rock bottom. Wow. And luckily I did not have the courage to pull the trigger. Yeah. That's a massive depression too. When you yeah. reach that point where you're using your ADHD and your anxiety and stuff. Um, and I imagine some PTSD, uh, you know, when you reach a point where uh, trying to shut your mind off by and get it to quit whipping you, uh is 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 a hell of a place to be and i'm glad you didn't and now you're in a much better place oh, um <laughs> definitely yeah. and yeah, i mean you've 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 lost a, a ton of weight you 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 know your your body looks good you're you're in shape now um you you talk about something on your uh website about progressive discipline technique which is a military backed training method methodology yeah. tell us how that works for clients that you're working with so uh, what I've noticed is that a lot of times people will start programs, whether it's mm -hmm. through a coach or it's like, I'm going to go to this new gym or I'm going to get to start this new diet or whatever. And it, they try to pile on too much too quick. Mm -hmm. get overwhelmed, trying to maintain it. Mm -hmm. They end up quitting and they don't stay. They're not consistent with it. And so mm -hmm. they end up staying exactly where they're at. And then they tell themselves in their mind, like, well, I've already tried all this other stuff. Nothing works. I'm destined to be this way. And they, they stay in that rut in life, right? Mm -hmm. And I always tell I always tell my clients the difference. The only difference between a rut and a grave is the depth of the hole. That's true. That's and, true. So, and so uh what that what I what I do with my coaching with my progressive discipline technique is I add small things at a time. As I'm gonna add one thing, and we're gonna get used to doing that. We're gonna mm -hmm. start to get some benefit, and then we're gonna add another thing. And then we're going to add another thing and then we're going to add another thing. So I'm not adding everything all at once. I want to add things over time to progressively build you so that you can handle the load. So if I were to handle and you can, this is normal for entrepreneurship, right? Right. If, if you're a brand new entrepreneur and you want to get you like, oh, I want to be the CEO of a big company, right? If you haven't even been able to start and build your way up there, you're not going to be able to handle stress at that level, right? It will, cr it will crush you. Mm -hmm. and, and and you have to be, it, it's a, it's a progressive, what's called progressive overload as well. Um, and as an entrepreneur, that's why you have to start at the bottom of being a solopreneur and working your way up to build your business up because the, as their business gets larger, the problems also get larger, right? If I started an agency when I first came in with the problems that I have now with the agency, <laughs> I would have quit insurance a long time ago because it would have crumbled me. And so same with working out. If you, if someone's brand new working out, they try to go do 405 pounds on the bench press. Like what I wanted to get to when I first started, I could barely do 135 for a set. Right. But I saw it. I was like, I want to do it. It seemed so unreal and out of reach, but I just knew I'm going to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. I eventually got it and I eventually was able to do it. And for, for a set. Right. But it took years of lifting. Yeah. If I was yeah. try to do it ahead of time, it would have crushed me. And it's the same thing. Mentally, we quit when things are too difficult. But if we handle something, it gets normalized. Then we add something else because normalized over time. It's the same as progressive overload. So that's that's basically what that technique is and how I can help people to reclaim discipline within their life and really start making 
drastic changes physically, mentally, and spiritually. There you go. I, I, I really agree with what you say. Having a balanced lifestyle, like you talk about in your website, um, the mind, body, uh, soul, spirit experience makes all the difference. And what's funny is most of it really didn't connect for me until I started going to the gym and working out. And it solved so many different issues that I was having. Mm -hmm. And now I just love going to the gym. Um, even though I don't feel like living, lifting weights, I mean, sometimes I'll just go walk on the treadmill, take the incline really high. Like I did last night, uh, go sit in the sauna. The sauna is an incredible, like just an incredible vehicle. I, I always discounted the sauna, but you're like, oh, I go in there and sweat. But that thing really opens up your pores and opens up your blood flow. And, and, uh, I don't know, there's kind of a piece of meditation to it as well. Yeah. You, you get, you're more mindful in there. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it clears your thoughts. I don't know how. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. and being relaxed and, and, you know, the other thing that people I think make a big mistake with going to the gym is they don't prepare their body well, like taking proteins and different uh, things that you can do to, to build muscle, but also help you with recovery. Mm. And they don't mind the recovery aspect too. Like I'm, I'm big on, on recovery too as well i, I go to the they have, my gym's got these great massage those oyster rollback uh what do they call them zero gravity yes, <clears throat> massagers yes. and they help me recover like sometimes i'll i'll be like the next day i'm like oh man i want to go do a leg day arm day killed me and i'm like okay just just go sit in the massage chair and the massage chair will break all those tight muscles up that are wound up and everything get the blood flowing um, maybe do some treadmill and then I'm like, okay, I, I think we got all the blood moving and all the unlocked <laughs> muscles unlocked. Let's go, uh, let's, let's go do leg day. That's, um, that's also a process known as habit stacking. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so if you don't want to do something right, mm -hmm. you're like, man, I'm going to go, I want to go run a marathon, but I never run or like, mm -hmm. you don't want to go run. Right. Mm -hmm. Just the action of going, getting up and like putting your shoes on and being like, well, I'm just going to step outside and see how mm -hmm. it feels. Right. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're outside. You're like, well, you know, I'm already outside. I might as well start walking. And then you start walking 10 paces down the road. You're like, ah, I'm going to jog a little bit. Then you start jogging. Next thing you know, you did your run. That, that habit or that, that practice is those habit stacking. And so what you're doing is you're, you're basically trying to stack new habits into other habits that make it towards the natural progression, almost like you're getting off onto a interstate, like, or you're, you're getting on an exit ramp or an entrance ramp on an interstate, right? Like once you're on the ramp, it kind of forces you into traffic, mm -hmm. right? So that's why you you are like, and this is actually, it's brilliant that you're doing this. A lot of people don't realize this and they kind of naturally do it, which is, you know, I don't want to go to the gym. I'm just going to go and I'm going <laughs> to sit in the sauna a little bit, see if I can warm myself up. Next thing you know, once you're there, you're like, I'm already here. I might as well just go ahead and work out. And I'm feeling uh, a little bit better about it. And uh, you end up doing it because you've already gotten onto that entrance ramp and you're on the highway and there's only one way to go. So <laughs> when you really think about it, you're, you're using the same hack that your body does when it goes, I'll just have one more beer. I'll just, uh, I'll just have a burger and fries. I'll just, you know, the, you have a snack in a much different way that's destructive to your health. Yes. And uh, this way you're using it to do stuff that improves your it improves your life. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I like that the habit stacking, I, you know, I just, I just it, showing up is just half the battle and you kind of feel good. You see other people working out and, you know, when you're sitting around the house, you know, no one's working out and you're just like, oh, and they're just sitting here eating, you know, we're eating Cheetos naked in a beanbag chair watching, I don't know, a uh, bachelorette or whatever. Uh, <laughs> This is comedian. Cheeto dust in my belly button. Yeah, you gotta love it. <laughs> but uh, we've all been there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, you go to the gym, you see people working out. You're like, hey, I should work out too. And you know, you, you sometimes I get inspired. I see somebody who's who's starting to work out. They're really obese, and, and I love I'm them. Like I'm like, hey man, look at this person. They they showed up. They have won the one percent battle, or however many people don't go to the gym. Um, they, they're winning because they showed up and they're trying, God bless them for trying and, right. and, and hopefully they stick with it. Um, but you know, taking that first step sometimes is the hardest thing, you know, admitting you have a problem like, like you did identifying that, you know, you look in the mirror at 280 and you're like, Hey man, I don't want to do this anymore. So this has been really great uh, to have you on the show. Uh, Greg, uh, give us your final thoughts and pitch as we go out on the show. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, 
when I was, when I was having really tough times, um, you know, I was, I was during a breakup and, um, during that breakup, I was, dude, I was like really depressed. I was crying all the time. I was like in the car and I listened to music that reminded me of her and I was sit there and ball like a baby. And so, um, I was at the time I, I was really, really bad at insurance. This is towards the tail end when I first started to really focusing on what I had to do. And, um, I was so bad that I had to get a, another job that was a, a w2 sales job where i got a small salary plus commissions no oh. um and it was literally for like two months mm-hmm. and i i was going through the training with with another person him and i trained together and he was a, a really nice young man i don't even remember this guy's name i feel bad but he saw how to, and i told him the whole story about my depression and how this girl broke up with me and all this stuff you know and how it became suicidal wow and uh that girl came to see me at work to come get something uh-huh. And it just crushed me, like seeing her, right? Wow. And uh, I was like, I can't go back upstairs. Like him and I were sitting outside, and I was like, he was like, dude, you look bad. I was like, I can't go back upstairs. And he was like, well, I'll cover for you, you know. And so I was dr- walking back to my car, could go put on some terrible music to cry to, to drive home. It was like an hour drive home. <laughs> and as I was walking, he sends me a text, and he's like, hey, Greg, I just wanted you to know that the night's always darkest before the dawn. Oh. and the dawn's coming and i was like one it's a great quote from a movie but two like oh man, yeah, so it's right, true man, it's so right and i was and like, it made me start tearing up when i when i saw that mm-hmm. and i and that was the last day i cried about that woman that was the last nice day. nice and, and that was when i was like i gotta get my like i'm not gonna stay this way together so forever and and so the the, the lasting um you know thought i want to leave with everybody is that nothing is permanent Mm-hmm. change is is the only constant and so if you're in, if you're in a bad spot in life it will change if you're in a good spot spot don't don't rest on your laurels because it will change right mm-hmm. and you have to be always diligent in trying to improve yourself so that you can weather the storms and that you can enjoy the good times while still gaining momentum in your life and your business and your relationships and everything and i believe in you whether you don't believe in you, I believe in you because I know everybody's potential is unlimited and unknown. There you go. We so. both believe in you. We believe in you. Yeah. I feel like we're an SNL skit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. But no, you're right. The best thing to do in your darkest moments is to find find your basis for being grateful for what you have and realizing the assets that you have and then start taking baby steps. And if you're suffering different depression or some sort of the darkness, go to the gym, especially if you're a man, because, uh, you know, doing leg day is so important for your masculinity, your testosterone, you get that testosterone going and testosterone does so many great things for you. We talked about this in the pre-show. If you're a man and you're in your older ages, check your, check your testosterone levels. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we live in an age where I think we're 30% lower testosterone levels than 20 or 30, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. Um, it's a real issue for men right now. And, and there's so much estrogen and, and uh plastics and stuff in our in our diets and everything estrogenetics um it, it, it's affecting our our ability to have good testosterone and it creates such a great balance for you you just feel you know that like we talked about in the show spiritual mental physical everything and when you have that you're more of a complete person there yes. you go there you go uh great give us your dot com so people can find you on the interwebs and get to know you better and your blog podcast etc yeah, if you want to learn more about my coaching, go to deltafitlife.com. I've got a bunch of videos. I've got client testimonials. I've got a lot of information on there. Uh, if you want just daily content to help you to be a better person, go check out my Instagram at Gregory A. Birch underscore. It's like Gregory A. Birch underscore. You'll see my ugly mug. Can't miss it. Um, yeah, and and uh, if you ever have any issues with depression or anxiety or you're looking for some help or just someone to talk to, send me a DM. Like, I want to help. I want to be able to understand and see if I can provide you any guidance moving forward to take you out of that rut in life. There you go. Servant leadership. I love it. Uh, thank you very much, Greg, for being on the show and inspiring our audience. Thank you, Chris, for having me on. And for everyone listening, take the, take the time to share this show for Chris. This is a massive undertaking. It really is. Doing podcasts is very, it's it's challenging. It's un, an undertaking. And the amount of content he's putting out on a weekly basis, I can tell you, takes a considerable amount of effort. The best thing you can do 
is to share this content with somebody else that can also learn and grow from it. It could be any one of his shows, but it helps Chris in so many different ways. And it helps all the the, the uh, people that come on as guests as well. So I highly yeah. recommend it. There you go. Thank you much for the plug. We really appreciate it, Greg. Because my back hurts, damn it. <laughs> I think there's four today, actually. Uh, but thank you very much, Greg. Thanks, my audience, for tuning in. As always, uh, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Voss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Voss, and Chris Voss One. And thanks to all our wonderful people who've been giving us those five star ratings on iTunes. We love you, people. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.